Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about transition matrices. So, uh, what is a transition matrix? Well, um, it's a matrix that changes. So, if I have a vector and uh, I find the coordinate vector for that vector relative to a particular basis, um, it's going to be a uh, vector that changes one set of coordinates relative to one basis into another set of coordinates relative to another basis, all for the same vector. Um, so in this example, this is a basis for all of R2. In fact, it's the standard basis. And this is a basis for R2 as well. How do I know that? Well, based on the last section, uh, this has the right number. Any, any basis for R2 must consist of two vectors, so it has the right number of vectors. And as we saw in the last section, as long as these are either a span of R2 or linearly independent, then that's enough. And so I'll do the simpler one. These are linearly independent because they're not constant multiples of each other. There's no constant I can multiply 1, 1 by to get to 1. Um, and so therefore, this is also a... Um, basis for all of R2. So let's, uh, let's talk about coordinates a little bit more. What are coordinates? Well, so any vector can be written as a linear combination of these, any vector in R2 that is, um, and it can also, that same vector can be written as a linear combination of these. So let me give you an example. I'm going to take the vector 5, 3. So how can I write 5, 3 as a linear combination of the standard basis vectors? Well, this is actually very easy because 5, 3 can be written as 5 times u1 plus 3 times u2. And so 5 and 3 are the coordinates for that vector because they're the coefficients of the two uh, basis vectors. So in other words, the vector 5, 3 relative to this basis has as its coordinate vector 5, 3. It's the same thing, and that will always be the case when you're talking about the um, standard basis, especially in, in Rn for, for whatever value of n you want. So how can I write 5, 3 as a linear combination of these two vectors? Well, uh, if I'm doing this correctly, and it looks like I am, so uh, I can get 5, 3 by doing one of these, plus two of those, just to convince you that two of these is the vector 4, 2, and if I add one, one, one vector, uh, that would make that 5, 3. So in other words, relative to this basis, uh, the vector 5, 3 has as its coordinate vector 1, 2, uh, because those are the coefficients. So a transition matrix uh, that goes from B prime to B uh, it would need to, for this particular example, it would need to change the coordinate vector 1, 2 into the coordinate vector 5, 3. And there are a lot of matrices, uh, presumably, that would do that, but there's only one that would do that for any particular set of coordinate vectors. So um, let's take a look at this uh, problem right here. I want to change from this basis into that basis. So how would I do that? Well, I'm going to start doing that by setting up um, a, uh, a system of linear equations that would help us out. So I can tell that the vector u1 prime can be written as, 1, 1 can be written as the sum of these two. In other words, u1 plus u2. And then for uh, u2 prime, I can get that by doing two of these plus one of those. So I'll write that as 2u1 plus u2. Now, the coordinate vector, remember, uh, is written as, um, if I take uh, this particular vector and put brackets around it, and I'm also going to put it relative to this particular basis. So u1 prime is the vector 1, 1. And notice, relative to basis b, so how can I write it as a linear combination of these two? Well, notice that's precisely what I have right here. 
So in other words, we could write that, if we're writing it as a column, as 1u1 plus 1u2. And I'll do the same thing for uh, u2 prime. And this one's really easy uh, because u2 prime, I mean, both of these are easy, but u2 prime is just 2u1 plus u2. So if I'm doing that coordinate vector relative to basis b, um, it's 2u1 plus 1u2. And what we saw was that uh, these are going to form the columns of the, um, of the transition matrix. Uh, that's how it's defined. So in other words, uh, the matrix that changes um, coordinate vectors uh, in B prime uh, into coordinate vectors for B is just going to be, and again, for the first column, I would write uh, u1 prime relative to b, so 1, 1, uh, and then I would write u2 prime uh, relative to b as 2, 1, and so there is your answer. Now, just to convince you, um, or hopefully this would convince you, uh, let's see if this changes the vector uh, 1, 2 into the vector 5, 3. So if I were to, and again, from here we're just checking because that's our answer. Um, but if I wanted to change uh, the vector 1, 2 using this one, so let's check and see if I apply this matrix to that vector, what do I end up getting? And notice it would be 1 plus 4, which is 5, and then here it would be 1 plus 2, which is 3. And so that was the example that we had. Uh, and notice that uh, it does change the vector, the coordinate vector 1, 2, into the coordinate vector 5, 3. Now again, does that mean that this is the correct answer? No, it doesn't. But at least if that didn't work, then we would know something was wrong um, with our answer. Okay. Now, just a, a point made before we move on to part B. Um, if you are changing, if you're, if you're looking for the transition matrix that changes into the standard uh, uh, basis, or does things relative to the standard basis, then what you'll notice right here is the columns for the transition matrix are just the vectors for uh, basis B prime. That will always be the case. So if you are changing into uh, the standard basis, uh, finding that um, matrix will be pretty easy. So let's go the other way then. Uh, now, before we, uh, I guess, do this a little bit formally, notice that going the other way would need to change the vector 5, 3 into the vector 1, 2. So notice if you were to multiply by the inverse of this right here, and you know that'll always have an inverse because remember these need to be linearly independent. Uh, if you multiply by the inverse of that on the left, uh, that should be the answer. Um, now I'm not going to work it that way, but we can at least check at the end to see if that was accurate. So let's do what we did in this problem uh, for part A and just kind of reverse it. So let's solve for U1 and for U2. Now notice... Um, if I do this equation and subtract that equation, my U2s will go away and I'll just get U1. So in other words, U1 is going to be U2 prime minus U1 prime. And I'm actually going to uh, rewrite that so that the basis vectors are in order. All right, so negative U1 prime plus uh, U2 prime. And if I were to plug that in for U1, I ought to be able to solve uh, for U2 pretty easily. So if I put in right here negative U1 prime, and I move it over, that make, that'll make two of those. And if I have plus U2 prime right here, when I move that over, it will become minus. So in other words, U2 should be 2U1 prime minus U2 prime. So let's find the uh, coordinate vectors for these. So in other words, what is u1 relative to 
the basis B prime. Well, you'll notice it's negative U1 prime plus U2 prime, so it should be negative U1 prime plus U2 prime. So it's going to be the call vector negative 1, 1. And if we do the same thing for uh, U2 relative to B prime, notice it is 2U1 minus 1U2. So in other words, the uh, transition matrix that goes from B to B prime ought to have this as its first column and this as its second column. Now let's check and see if that changes uh, vector 5, 3, coordinate vector 5, 3 into coordinate vector 1, 2. So again, we think that's our answer. From here, we're just checking. So uh, negative 1, 2, and 1, negative 1, and let's multiply this by 5, 3. Well, notice that would be negative 5 plus 6. So in other words, you would get a 1. And then you would have 5 minus 3, which is a 2. And that's exactly what we wanted. Now, uh, that's, those are the answers for the example. But just to say a little bit more about that, remember we said that we thought that the inverse of this should be that. Let's check that and see. So I am, uh, again, at this point, just checking. Not something you would necessarily have to do, but uh, let's call this vector A, uh, since I'm using P on both of them. Uh, the determinant of A is 1 minus 2, so uh, negative 1. And then remember that A inverse should be 1 over the determinant of A. And then remember, we switched the entries on the main diagonal. They were both 1, so they're still both 1s. But then we negate the other diagonal. Now, the uh, scalar right here is negative 1, so basically I'm just changing the signs uh, on all of these. And you will notice that that matrix is, in fact, the other matrix we were looking at. So um, that just highlights, again, it doesn't prove, it's just an example, but it does highlight that um, if you can find the transition matrix from one basis into the other, then if you were to go the other way, um, it is going to be the inverse matrix. So hopefully that makes sense, and if you have any questions, please let me know.